Hey guys, it's Ryan from Resume to Offer. It is a beautiful Friday on November, um, and today we're going to be talking about how to beat the applicant tra tracking system, the ATS system, the dreaded ATS system. <laughs> how do you beat it? Why is it important for you to know about this? So it is very, very important. So if this is your first time to the channel. Obviously, I, I've, I've done recruiting for, I think, 11 plus years now. I've, I've done interviewed 10,000 people. I've seen over 100,000 resumes. I've used multiple applicant tracking systems. Okay, I've used multiple different ones. I've used Recruit CRM, Zoho Recruit, Clear Company, um, Lever. Like I've used a, a bunch of different ones out there. So I, I definitely know this area very, very well. And it's something you need to be very aware of if you're going into the job market or <laughs> if you're just returning to the job market um, because AI is now becoming a big thing in the world of recruiting and applicant tracking systems. So here's what you, here's some general, I'm gonna give you some parameters, some things and some tips so you can help position yourself accordingly so you stand out and that you actually get into the hands of the hiring manager or the recruiter or who's ever running the company. So here's some things you should consider. First off is the size of the company. If it's a small company, usually between one to 50, they probably don't have a strong applicant tracking system. Not usually because they, you know, applicant tracking systems, at least the most modern ones, cost a lot of money. It's almost like hiring another staff member, right? Because the whole thing is that they're going to automate a lot of processes, so you don't need to hire somebody else. When, they're, when it's a company who's a startup, they probably don't have it, so you don't need to worry about it too much. However, you still want to optimize your resume accordingly. Companies that are between like over 100 or 200, definitely 1,000 to 10,000, they definitely use AI applicant tracking systems. So you really want to be aware of this stuff. Otherwise, you're going to get lost in the shuffle. If I post a job for, say, tech sales, I'm going to get 400 applications within a day. That's how crazy it is right now and, how, and why it's very imperative that you stand out with your resume, get your foot in the door, and then you, you know, convey your personality, storytelling abilities, and your sales skills in the interview process. Okay? So let's talk about this. Number one. When you are, are first kind of designing your resume, you got to do your, your research beforehand. Number one, you want to do your research on the companies you're going to be applying to. Um, you know, the, kind of like the, the demographics, you know, where they are, you know, the size of the company, very, very important, as well as you want to make sure that you are plucking different keywords in the company, as well as the job description itself. So if you look at the job description, um, they should, especially in the responsibilities area, key things that are like must, nice to haves versus must haves. You want to make sure you have, look at the must haves and make a note of the key terms that they're using in the job ad or job description. Another note is if it's a company you really want to go into, really look into the other people that are working in the same department that you'd be joining. Look at their LinkedIn. Look at also what certifications they have, the education, the responsibilities. What terms kind of pop out to you? Okay, so for example, if you're in sales, and I know a lot of salespeople watch this channel, right? Are they looking at uh, is is things like sales cadence, sales funnel, inbound sales, outbound sales, different terminology kind of um, coming at you from the job description? So you want to make a note of that because if you're if you're like if you're if you're trying to get hired in tech sales and it's for an inbound you know sales development rep, right? They're probably going to search inside sales <laughs> in your resume. So you got to make sure you, you think about it. Oh, and maybe I didn't clarify. The reason why this is important is because if there's 500 applications coming in, the ATS system is then going to be like, hey, a probability factor attached to it that this resume is the most likely to succeed, or these are your top 10 applicants, or these are the top 30 applicants who, who fit the bill of what demographic and candidate persona you're going for. No, I'm using a lot of words, but this is really how, how it happens. So I got my coffee. All right. So this is the only case also where I talk about certifications. So if you guys remember, I made a video about certifications versus kind of like the actual um, uh, education. It really depends on the industry. And I've slightly shifted a little bit of my, like now that I've learned a little bit more information, I still stand by if you're in cybersecurity. If you're in cybersecurity, you definitely want to get a, a bachelor's or a master's. Okay, if you get a boot camp, you're taking a huge chance. And I'd only do a boot camp if you're already in a cybersecurity company. If you're in sales, uh, obviously, 
there's not really like a education for sales these days, except the school of hard knocks. So that one, I do recommend having a, a certification. And you can find all the different certification programs below. I work with higher levels, also known as Tech Sales Ascension. I actually am on the, you know, the weekly calls, giving free tips uh, for your resumes and your interviews. So I definitely recommend that. Check out the description if you want more information. But you want to make sure that you are, for certifications, especially in cybersecurity, if you have a certification, this is where you're going to use it, okay? Um, if you're in cybersecurity, SEC plus, you got to have SEC plus, you got to have SEC plus. Don't even start applying unless you have that. SEC plus is security plus, by the way. <laughs> so just heads up. Um, so yeah, definitely do that. If you're doing, you, it has to have certifications that make sense. If in the job description, it lists a certification that is a must have, you know, you want to make sure you're putting it in your resume only if you actually have it. Okay. All right. Let's. I'll move on to other stuff. So sales development representative, um, cybersecurity, make sure you know if there's acronyms that go with your job title or past job titles. So for example, if you're putting on your resume sales development representative in the industry, people also put SDR. Make sure you're putting both in your resume at some point because the recruiter on, in the, you know, in the, the recruiter in the company is probably just going to research SDR not sales development experience or sales development rep. So make sure you're putting different variations of your title throughout your resume. And make sure you do this with your previous job titles too, okay? Make sure you tailor your resume so it is making sense for the role that you're applying for, okay? So we talked about do your research beforehand, use certifications you know, at the right points, make sure you're putting different acronyms, Flood the correct vocabulary of your industry into your resume. We're going into general stuff. For fonts, use between 10 to 12. For font types, Arial, Calibri, or Times New Roman. Um, a lot of statistics have shown that Arial and Times New Roman are a little bit more beneficial. Um, a lot of resumes nowadays also are a little bit more image-oriented or creative-oriented. That You guys get stuff off Canva and things like that. I get it. Um, that doesn't matter to a AI applicant tracking system, okay? They're pulling out certain vocabulary words and key terms, not the images that you're put on there. The images are very nice and are totally good for the right company, probably a smaller company. For bigger companies, I would not use those, okay? Make sure you check for grammar. Oh my God. <laughs> the biggest red flag and to get you booted already off the interview is that the recruiter is reading your resume. And by the way, the recruiter only reads your resume between seven to 20 seconds. Okay, so you have seven seconds to make a first impression. Okay, so this is very, very vital. It's a little bit like <laughs> it's like, like online dating sometimes. All right, they're, they're judging it. Uh, 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 swipe left, swipe right. Um, so you got want to make sure that you have all these components. Make sure you check for grammar. Very, very key. Um, high executives, when you're dealing with high executives, Grammar is so key. If you also have just like basic bad grammar, you're probably not going to be a fit. They're going to think that you're not the right one. Um, but I know that from executives, and this is my days back in um, when I was dealing with big government contractors, and grammar, grammar was very specific. Okay, grammar and vocabulary, and I'll, I'll touch out on that in a second. Right, so. Those are a few few things that you can do. Some add-on tips that you might be able to use. Um, I've talked about using borders in your things. Make sure you have um, an executive summary. Do you use a, you know, should it be one or two pages? You know, there's this lot of statistics that actually show if you are under five years experience, okay? If you're under five years experience, you should have it at one page. You know, very key. If you are between five to 15 years, you know, two pages is great. If you have more than that, three pages is the max. A lot of people have debates over if it should be one page or two pages. It doesn't matter that much, to be honest. The, the average recruiter likes one to two pages. That's fine. And that's a 70%. There's a 70% statistic that recruiters are all fine with that standard. Three pages is kind of your max. Would not go beyond that. So don't go beyond three pages. And it depends on the amount of experience. If you have like 20 years experience, I do get it's hard to fit it on two pages. Um, but if you have less than five years, try to get on one. Now, having said that, when you go into the interview, 
in person, it should be a one page resume. Okay. So for example, if you submit it digitally, that could be two pages. And then you have a summarized one page resume that you print out and you have in your portfolio if you're going to meet them in person. And you have multiple copies that you pass out to the panel that they all have it. And you let them know also this is a simplified version in one page format. Okay. So keeping on the bet, uh, but, but obviously the, you're like, if you're worried about like, well, it's not going to tell my whole story. If you're already in the interview, that's your opportunity to tell your story. You don't really need the resume. Trust me, they're not going to be reading it the whole time you're talking. They're going to glance at it from time to time and then talk to you. So uh, those are some general tips that I would strongly recommend um, that could be very, very, very useful. So let's see how to beat the ATS system. Again, you, you want to make also sure that companies that you are really interested in joining, that you follow them and that you try to connect with the HR person or the hiring manager before the job comes out. Say it's like, Hey, I got a six month time frame. I would love to join this company. Um, I would befriend befriend or message through LinkedIn, the person who's in charge of HR, the person who's in charge of the department you want to join, and just start a professional dialogue with them. Also follow them, follow them on Indeed and in LinkedIn, maybe ZipRecruiter too, so that when the job does come up, when the job does get posted, you're first to act. A lot of times, speed is the name of the game. And you want to make sure that you are usually within the first 100 applicants to get the job. If they already have 500 applicants, trust me, the door kind of shuts at a certain point. They already have enough to go start going through. Um, unless you're a referral into the company, they're probably not going to look at your resume. So for the first, you, you want to make sure that you, ideally, honestly, you're like one of the first 20. That's like the ideal scenario. The ideal scenario, if, if you had a perfect thing, is you have an ATS optimized resume. You're one of the first 20 people that applied to the job. You also know people in the company who can give you professional reference into the company. That's like the, the, the utmost ideal scene. And you already have a lot of things on the responsibilities that they're exactly looking for. And the ATS is going to say, hey, this person's a perfect match. So that is the ideal scene you're kind of going for. Anyway, so I hope this helps. Hope this was good information. Um, yeah, a lot, of, a lot of crazy stuff going on. Some basic announcements for anybody who wants to know. I was in Chicago uh, all last week at a tech conference, and I really got to meet a lot of cool people, pick their brains, and you had a whole mix. It wasn't like all high performers. It was you know people coming into the industry, people who are really excelling. One guy making like a hundred grand a, a week. So, and he's not on. You, these are not people you find on YouTube, guys. They're not YouTube people. So it's very interesting to kind of find out about. So. Some things I would consider and I would recommend. If you want a little bit one-on-one -on -one coaching or you want me to take a look at your resume, feel free to reach out. Um, I don't mind kind of like taking a look to kind of get an idea. I give you a little bit of like, you know, a few tips, but to really deep dive, uh, obviously, you know, feel free to book a one-on-one. -on -one. You can go to resume to offer.com. The other thing is I do mention higher levels. So higher levels or tech sales ascension. There was one person who booked a one-on-one -on -one with me who's going through that program. She just messaged me this morning. She just got a job doing sales, like tech sales uh, at a marketing, uh, I think a marketing style company. And uh, that was really rewarding. So feel, like definitely recommend that course. Book a one-on-one. -on -one. I can help you practice your mock interview. Also different things that I, I don't really say on YouTube in terms of like, you know, sales procedure, um, looking at your resume and a few other tidbits that will really help. Um, so feel free to book those. The other thing is, uh, you know, I, I'll probably leave this for another video, but I wanted to plant a seed is that when it comes to ATS systems, the original, the OG ATS system was actually a guy named Johnson O'Connor. And this was back in the 19, like 30s to the 1950s. And he discovered that the number one thing that all the people who had leadership status in their company, he worked at GE, all the people who had leadership status, the number one thing was the level of vocabulary, okay? So I have, I've talked about TechnoTutor, which is a vocabulary builder. It's something I do every day. Check out the videos I've made on it. I have about three or four videos where I kind of go into detail on that. Definitely recommend it, and I give you the reasons why. And the more I've like researched on ATS systems, vocabulary and having strong vocabulary skills is very, very important. And it's actually a per 
uh, when they when they make leadership profiles for their ATS to look at, it's one of the number one things that they look for. Okay, so it's something to consider. Anyway, guys, hope you have a great weekend and talk to you soon. Cheers.